How fast can I explain the basics of general chemistry? We're about to find out. So right here, I have two different elements that I grabbed from the periodic table, and you're gonna need to know how to read these. So listed below is the molar mass. That is the amount of grams per mole you have of each element. Listed above is the atomic number. That is the number of protons. And listed right here are the element symbols, which are the symbols which represent the element that you look at on a periodic table. Now, what we're trying to do is determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons we have in each element. Well, the number of protons, again, is just the atomic number listed above. To determine neutrons, what you wanna do is take your rounded molar mass and subtract off the number of protons that you have. So if I take each molar mass and round it to a whole number, that's going to give me 27 and 16 respectively. And if I take the number of protons, which we have calculated up here, I can just run this subtraction right here. And that's going to give me 14 neutrons for aluminum and 8 neutrons for oxygen. And to determine the number of electrons, it's going to be the number of protons minus your charge. Now on a periodic table of elements, all elements have a neutral charge, which means the charge is zero for each of these. So the number of protons we have is 13 and 8 respectively, and the charge is going to be zero on both because we're looking at the raw elements on the periodic table. So if we do the math here, we're gonna get 13 electrons for aluminum and eight electrons for oxygen. Notice that the protons and electrons match here. Now this will always be the case when we're dealing with neutral atoms like this on a periodic table, but this won't always be the case when we're dealing with ions. So for example, if we have a chemical reaction like this, now we're gonna be dealing with charges. So this aluminum ion here is gonna form a positive charge of three, and this oxygen here is gonna form a negative charge of two. Now notice that these are the reactants we have here, and these are the products which have no net charge. This should make sense, because notice we have two aluminum that form here and each one has a plus three charge and we have three oxygen that form here and each one has a minus two charge two times three is six three times negative two is negative six notice the charges cancel and we're left with a zero net charge so that's how we get these products from these reactants but notice we actually run into an issue here our equation here is unbalanced because if you look closely we have one aluminum in the reactants but two aluminum in the products and we have two oxygen in the reactants but three oxygen in the products so we're going to need to find a way to balance this chemical equation well if i take a two and throw it on the aluminum in the reactants that's going to get the two aluminums to balance here but now we need to balance the oxygens well the least common multiple between two and three is six. So what I can do is take a three and put it as the coefficient on these two oxygens here. And by the way, you can only change the coefficients in front. You can't actually change any of these subscripts down here. So I can take a three and put it on this O2 right here, and that's gonna give me six oxygens in the reactants. But to get six oxygens here, I have to take a two and throw it on this entire compound, which will give me six oxygens here. So now the oxygens are balanced. But notice that when we put this two here, we unbalance the aluminum, because now there's four aluminum on this side in total. So what I need to do is go back to the aluminum and the reactants and change that to a four. And that's gonna give me four here and four here, and then six here and six here. So four aluminums on each side and six oxygen on each side. And notice now that all the numbers here are balanced, which means this equation is balanced. That was Introduction to Chemistry.